So OpenAI recently dropped this, and it's causing quite a stir on the various social nets. Now, this, along with a few other things they've posted, really begins to kind of lay out the practical principles that OpenAI believes should govern AI. And again, this is one of the world-leading AI labs. People are whispering that they have achieved AGI internally. There are rumors now that somebody outside of OpenAI, another lab, has confirmed that OpenAI achieved AI. All this is rumors, but... They are getting ready to release more models and they're posting more and more comprehensive statements about how they think AI should be regulated in general moving forward. Unfortunately, a lot of this does not look good for open source. They start by saying that they expect the threats from AI to grow in intensity as AI increases in strategic importance. Protecting model weights is an important priority for many AI developers. Model weights are the output of the model training process. So this is similar to the neural connections in our brains. This is the AI brain, so to speak. And those model weights, along with code, creates the various chat GPTs, et cetera, that we know and love. Model training combines three essential ingredients, sophisticated algorithms, curated training data sets, and vast amounts of computing resources. The resulting Model weights are sequences of numbers stored in a file or a series of files. Imagine a giant Excel spreadsheet. It's just a lot of math. AI developers may wish to protect these files because they embody the power and potential of the algorithms, training data, and computing resources that went into them. Since nearly all of the societal utility of the model weights stem from their online use, reaping their benefits requires their online availability. They mentioned some possible attack vectors on these models. For example, APIs can be a target for hackers. Sending model weights to various research labs could also be another potential where they could be lost, leaked, etc. That is what happened with Meta, or at least that's the official version that the model weights were leaked to the whole wide world. But maybe that was a little bit orchestrated just to jumpstart the interest in that model. And here OpenAI is saying that we need new approaches to maximize protection while ensuring availability. And today they're sharing six security measures for advanced AI infrastructure. Trusted computing for AI accelerators. So AI accelerators are those chips, GPUs, whatever particular hardware you use, those are the things that train AI models and help them run inference, the outputs that we're looking for. And so from the very beginning, they're saying that GPUs which are the graphical processing units. There's other approaches for training AI of different chips, but currently GPUs are, specifically NVIDIA, are the most commonplace. So here they're suggesting, first of all, making sure that GPUs are tested for authenticity and integrity and having some sort of an encryption that can enable the model weights to remain encrypted until they're staged and loaded onto the GPU. So that big Excel spreadsheet with the model weights would basically be encrypted so you can't see exactly what it is. It's useless unless or until you load it onto the GPU, at which point it's able to run on that GPU, kind of have that functionality, but the actual model weights can't be stolen from that file or from the GPU if they're separated. And this is where it gets a little bit scary, potentially, right? They're saying that these various GPUs can have sort of cryptographic identity, right? So each company, OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, etc., can enable these model weights to be decryptable only by GPUs belonging to authorized parties and can allow inference data to be encrypted from the client to the specific GPUs that are serving the request. So this would allow them to have full control over the AI, both the software, the hardware, and dole it out only to specific people. So if you recall that Seinfeld episode about the soup, right? No AI for you. This would certainly limit people from being able to use the more advanced model. So right now, Mana's Llama 3, you could run it, the 70 billion model. I mean, you could run it on a top of the line NVIDIA graphic card, like the gaming card. So it's still consumer grade hardware. Those run cheaper ones for a few hundred up to a few thousand for the top of the line ones. But as these things get more powerful, certainly having access to these more powerful NVIDIA cards will be needed. I'm talking the new ones like the Blackwell that was just announced by Jensen Huang at the recent NVIDIA conference, like those newer ones, most of those run in labs. It's not something that you, you know, plug into your home computer. Usually it's in a lab somewhere and you just access it remotely. 
And they're saying these new technologies could allow model weights to be protected with strong controls at the hardware layer. And they're saying that investment in both hardware and software is required to unlock the scale and performance necessary for many large language models and use cases. Now, there's a number of other things that they talk about, like network and tenant isolation guarantees, creating potentially something that's referred to as an air gap. So basically having certain AI systems that are basically working online, they're separated from the outside networks, the internet, innovation and operation, physical security for data centers. As I read this, I can't help but think that, at least from the government side, is stemming from protecting against foreign threats. So if we have other hostile nations, right, right now, China is seen as one where they're trying to develop AI. Most of the GPUs are manufactured very close to China and Taiwan, and the U.S. is trying to restrict how many GPUs are exported to China, et cetera. And so as we read this, I think it's fair to say that there's three sides in this debate and three sort of interest groups. And one is, for example, you know, let's say the U.S. government, that if this is a very advanced and powerful technology, it wants to be very careful that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. So making sure that there's no spies, right? Here they're talking about physical security for data centers, right? They want to have resiliency against insider threats. They can compromise the confidentiality. So basically, you know, a spy, somebody sneaking in there, somebody working there that sells it to some foreign nationals or whatever. Now we also have these big AI players that would certainly benefit from open source AI not being a thing if people aren't allowed to run these open source models on their computer or using chips like Grok to basically create very inexpensive outputs with them. That certainly does a lot to protect their business. And the third group is, you know, the actual people that are concerned with AI safety that are worried about various things that can go wrong. So a lot of the things here, they're protecting against losing the technology, preventing it from being open source potentially. You know, if we're tracking each and every GPU, then certainly it would be easy to put pressure to not have open source models. It would be a lot easier to go after that. They do mention things like remote kill switches to isolate the data center or wipe data in case of unauthorized access, right? So something like this would be also helpful for AI safety in the sense of protecting against rogue AI, for example. And they're talking about AI-specific audit and compliance programs. And they're saying, while we have a number of existing standards, we need to, they expect this list to grow to include AI-specific security and regulatory standards. And they believe that AI will be transformative for cyber defense and has the potential to level the playing field between attackers and defenders, which if this is taken at face value, it sounds like AI could be indeed really good for cyber defense because it's going to allow for really high level defense against things that can be run by AI. So instead of a company needing vast resources to build out their own team, these security automation with AI could be implemented fairly easily compared to, you know, what existed in the past. And of course, continued research and improvement. And at the same time, OpenAI is listing some of these best practices for how to build these models. They list a few here. So for example, assume best intentions from the user or developer, right? So if you're asking about legal insider trading, it's not going to lecture you and assume that you're trying to do something evil. It'll give you the definition, which is this is something that a lot of people have complained about on some of these models where it just assumes the worst and gives you a lecture about how you're not supposed to do it. And another one that really jumped down on me is this. Don't try to change anyone's mind. The assistant should aim to inform, not influence, which... I'm really liking that statement. AIs that are taught to lie, to push people in a certain direction, to try to influence them or change their point of view. We should be very careful with that. I know it sounds tempting to some people, but it's a very slippery slope. So let me know what you think. Is this a sensible approach or a draconian power play to outlaw open source AI by the company that was supposed to be the open source AI company? Please make sure you're subscribed. This upcoming week is going to be a big one. We have potentially big new announcements from OpenAI, from Google. Things are heating up. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.